Welcome to the Pharmacist Voice Podcast, episode 222. I'm the host, Kim Newlove. Today's episode is my interview with audio engineer Julie Walthers. She is the only non pharmacist in my Pharmacist Authors series, which runs throughout June and July of 2023. Julie's part of the Pharmacist Authors series for a very important reason. We have worked together on two audiobooks, which I narrated for pharmacist authors. She is great at what she does, and I want to introduce her to you in this episode. If you're a pharmacist author looking to publish an audiobook, Julie may be able to help you. During our interview, we talk about the process of producing an audiobook, how much it costs to produce one, and fun vocabulary words like punch and roll, straight record, and raw audio. We also talk briefly about hiring a narrator and what you need if you want to narrate your own audiobook. There are 15 episodes in my Pharmacist Authors series. There's an introduction, 13 interviews, and then a wrap-up episode. This is episode 3 of 15. Subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast to get all the episodes delivered to your podcast player right when they come out. If you're new to the Pharmacist Voice podcast, welcome! Again, I'm Kim Newlove, the host. I'm a pharmacist by training, but I made a career transition to voice actor and podcast host. I graduated from the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy with my BS Pharm in 2001. I'm not in clinical practice anymore. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for pharmacists. If you have a project in mind, whether it's an audiobook, a medical narration project, or something podcast related, contact me through my website, thepharmacistsvoice.com. Let me tell you a little more about my guest, Julie Walthers, then we'll dive right into the interview. Julie's the owner and lead editor of Whole Story Studio, an audiobook post-production company. Her background includes sound engineering and high school English education. And Julie has worked on hundreds of audiobooks with a spectrum of clients ranging from major publishing companies to independent authors and narrators. In addition to editing and mastering audiobooks, Julie helps independent authors navigate the audiobook production process, which is why I invited her to be on the show today. If you're a pharmacist author who wants to publish an audiobook, I hope our conversation inspires you to start the process. Whether you need a voice talent to narrate the project or you want to narrate it yourself, you need to listen to this episode. There's also a bonus at the end, so stay tuned all the way to the end. Without further ado, here's my interview with Julie Walthers. Hi, Julie. Welcome to the Pharmacist Voice Podcast. How are you? I'm doing great, Kim. Thank you so much for having me here. My pleasure. It's not very often that I have a non-pharmacist on the podcast, so you are a non-pharmacist. It's good to have you here. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, and this is my first ever podcast, so uh, so I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure to have you here. We have worked together on a couple of audiobooks. You have helped me so much. We passed ACX specs. Our books are out there <laughs> in uh, earning money for me anyways. <laughs> and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Oh my gosh. Thank you. You are so much fun to work with, I have to say. Like you are the best new audiobook narrator I've ever had. I'm not just saying oh. that because I'm on your podcast. It's true. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. I remember when I asked you for help, I, I think our mutual friend, Jamie Matler, mm-hmm. what, had referred me to you. And you said, I'm a former English teacher, and I'm so excited to work with a new author or a new narrator. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, is she being facetious or is she actually excited? And were you really excited? Oh my gosh. Yes. In fact, I think feel like working with you as a first time uh, narrator put me on a kind of a different path or like added a different path to what I am able to offer through my through my business. So you were you were just great. And I, I was legitimately excited to work with you. Absolutely. 
Well, thank you. Yeah. You had good energy and your abilities were fantastic. So for anybody who doesn't know that I am an audiobook narrator, there you go. I'm an audiobook narrator. <laughs> and Julie, actually, she takes my clean audio with no mistakes, basically, and she double checks it. I want to toss the uh, the mic over to you, so to speak, so you can talk about what else you do other than you take my audio and we make a book with it. <laughs> so, uh, so there's a bit of an audio book process. Uh, so I, I'm lucky with you because you are familiar with how to record. You have your setup. You had more than basic editing skills. So by the time I got your audio, it was actually in really good shape. And not only that, you did your homework, you did such great prep on the audiobook, which I cannot tell you is so important for narrators to prep the audiobook so that by the time they are reading it, they you know, there's no surprises. They don't realize that they should have, I mean, I know for pharmacists, they're not, you know, reading characters who might, may or may not have accents, but, you know, still you have some pretty, you know, difficult language in the books that you are reading and to be able to prep and, and make sure that you're able to pronunciate everything that you need to, and you knew what your rights holder, your, you knew what your authors wanted from you. Um, it was incredible. So I really lucked out with you. And for you to be a first time narrator, you were well ahead of the game, you know, as far as um, getting started. But um, yeah, so what I normally do um, is I work with uh, narrators and uh, production companies and small presses. And everything is done remotely for me at the moment. One day I hope to have my own booth, but you know, COVID really made it possible and necessary for narrators to do a lot of home studio recording. So what ends up happening is the narrators will send me their raw punch and roll audio. Um, and punch and roll is just a fancy way of saying that you've taken out all the mistakes that you have caught and you're sending me, you know, the best that you have. And my job as the engineer is to listen to your audio and compare it with the manuscript that you're giving me to make sure that the words coming out of your mouth are more or less exactly the words that are on the page. And when I come across an issue, perhaps you misread something, maybe something uh, just isn't pronounced cor uh, correctly, then I send it back to you and you re-record it and then I magically stick it in. And uh, after that, I work my mastering process so that when you or your rights holder, rights holder is just another word usually for author, but sometimes the author and the rights holder are not necessarily the same person. Yeah, my, my job is to make sure it passes the ACX uh, quality control. So that involves some finagling of the audio and uh, whatnot. And uh, by the time I'm done, it sounds beautiful. And, you know, it's ready to go out into the world and make people happy or smarter or any and all of the above. So that is that is my job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you have great ears. You listen to audio all day, right? All day. All day. <laughs> yes. And she says it with a smile on her face. I, am, I know you can't, I'm legit smiling. You can't yes. see her, but yeah, she's legit mm -hmm. smiling. Yes. I can only imagine it must be so cool to just learn things just because you have to listen and compare to the manuscript. It, it's got to be kind of cool. You're kind of getting paid to learn. Oh my gosh. If there's one job that I have been preparing for my whole life between, you know, learning my first, my first uh, degree was more or less in sound engineering. My second was an English teacher. Um, this is putting together everything that I've ever studied uh, and love to do. And I get to listen to people, t you know, tell me stories all day. And it's, there are a lot of, you know, it's really nice, I have to say. Very cool. Well, I had a great experience working with you twice. <laughs> I don't think I ha have any reason to go anywhere else ever. Oh, so <laughs> next time I do a book, I will be coming back. Oh, <laughs> we'll keep working I, together. How's I that? cannot wait. And for real, awesome. I'm really excited. You, you do some really interesting stuff. So I love it. Please. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm, I've been told by this uh, audio engineer friend of mine that I'm improving as I do my books. So I hope to improve more. 
Absolutely. I mean, that first, I think for everybody, and this is such an important thing, is the first audiobook that you're going to do is it's one learning experience after another. And it could be really discouraging. And if you have an engineer who doesn't maybe have the patience or the ability even just to communicate with you, it could be a really rough experience. Um, and that working with you was great for me because I actually got to teach. Like I got to teach in a different way. And I found that I really, really enjoy working with, you know, first time narrators or just, you know, your first five books. I still consider you like a new narrator because you're still learning how things go. And it's really just nice for me to, to help, right? Like I just feel good about it. And so um, that was something that because of you, I like it was it was great because I got to teach and to audio engineer. And I think this is a really a good story because I think what I hear you saying is I'm coachable, I'm teachable. <laughs> you know how some people are though. They're like, no, I'm right. Mm -hmm. And they they care more about being right than they care about getting it right. I care about getting it right. You can teach me. It's totally fine. I just want to get it right, you know? Yes. Oh my gosh, I love that. Absolutely. Um I you took every single one of my suggestions and any like uh, notes that I had for the misread, like you were, you wanted to make sure you got it right. And so, uh, and that's the best because, you know, nobody wants to have a bad experience with, you know, narrator, engineer. Yeah. Now, when I got referred to you, I was looking for somebody who did it all. Like you were saying earlier, somebody who proofreads, that's what I call it. You're a proofer. Mm -hmm. Yep, proofer. So you listen to my audio and you compare it to the manuscript. You edit out things, meaning if I need to redo something because I've misread it and I need to speak it a second time into the microphone, you kind of knit it together. Mm -hmm. So that's called editing. I'm kind of going into this for my yes. listeners who are probably pharmacists and don't know about all mm -hmm. this. And then you produce the final files, including the, those annoying things like putting three seconds of dead <laughs> air in front of like a chapter, mm -hmm. right? Or at, at the end of one chapter, or you say the chapter title, and then you have to wait one second. There's all these specifications that the different publishers have, mm -hmm. like ACX is very particular. Mm -hmm. And you make all that weirdness <laughs> all come together, and I don't have to worry about it. So I really appreciated that. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That's the kind of stuff that is literally my job. Um, you know, we don't expect the narrators to you know, make sure that they have exactly the right amount of space at the beginning of the chapter, the end of the chapter between subtitles uh, or within chapters. That's I, you know, I put in the room tone. I make sure it's nice and clean and uh, take out any, you know, errant noises the best that I can. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's what I do. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I brought you on the show, not just to show off what I've done and what you can do. <laughs> but also to help pharmacists who are authors. Now, I am a big advocate for pharmacists who are authors also making the audiobook version. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, with my advocacy for audiobooks in mind, what could you do to help pharmacist authors? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, thank you for being an advocate of audiobooks. <laughs> That's, I mean, I know I'm 100% biased, but I happen to like them. Uh, and so I think another thing is that you opened up, working with you opened up a whole nother genre for me, which is, you know, this, this pharmacy genre, right? Like this is, you know, this is a pretty like niche uh, genre, if you will. And so I really enjoyed it because again, I got to learn and it was like, it was great. Um, for any authors out there. Wow. So my first suggestion really is to find in a voiceover and find a voice talent that works for you, that is able to really embody like you and your vibe and your, you know, what you're going for. Uh, there are plenty of uh, women and men and humans out there who are, you know, that's their, their niches, like this nonfiction sort of, you know, this, this nonfiction world. And they can do, they can take your words and really, it's almost like you're listening to another book. Like they just take your words and they make it sound 
it's just so incredibly professional and engaging. And so unless you as a pharmacist also happen to be a podcaster or a public speaker, or you feel really confident in your ability to read through your own work, I would, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to really take the time to find somebody you know, who can do that for you? Because reading your, I think Kim might agree, reading an audiobook is, is hard. Uh, it's hard on your, yeah. Do you want to speak to that? <laughs> I, I'm just going to jump mm-hmm. in here and say, yeah, it, it's, it is hard in some ways. You've got to keep the energy mm-hmm. and the pacing, the engagement, the enthusiasm, everything that starts with the letter E, you have to keep it all yep. going for the entire length of the book. And that can be hard. And also doing the engineering Mm -hmm. and being your own director, you have to wear so many hats when you do it all yourself. It can be nice to hire somebody, but back to you, Julie, how could you help a pharmacist? (laughs) So, yeah. Um, So if you have a book, if you're a pharmacist out there and you have a book and you want to bring an audio book component to it, uh, the first thing, you know, I guess I'm going to walk through my I guess my, what I do with people who come to me for any, you know, for any, for any audio book, uh, cause I also produce audio books. So if you say, Hey, Julie, I got this book. I really want to get it made. Uh, the first thing I'll ask is, are you going to be reading it or are you going to hire out some talent? And if you're going to be reading it, um, like I mentioned, I don't actually have a booth. And so I'm going to refer you out to some sort of, you know, studio and please, please, please make sure that you find a studio that actually knows how to record and edit, punch and roll edit for audiobooks. Um, not every studio is equipped, you know, like it recording and editing an audiobook is is very different than music. And so you can't really just ask any studio that records music to do this because uh, you know, you might have a 10 hour audiobook, but recording it might take 18 or 20 hours, right? So you have to sort of, you know, if you are an amateur voice talent, right? Or if you're reading it yourself. And so my first suggestion for you as a pharmacist, if you are going to read your own work is to find a good studio, someone who will be able to do a good job recording for you. Uh, And then um, or if you want me to find the talent, then that is my job. And I do a casting call for you. Uh, you give me a couple chapters of your book. And I, I ask my narrators, who I think would be a really good fit for you, to do a, um, an audition. And then I send you the audition. And uh, you choose your favorite actor. And it's great. It's actually doing auditions for books is so much fun. I absolutely love it. So, um, and then what happens, uh, whether you're recording or you have talent recording for you, I get the audio and, uh, I do my magic. I edit and I proof and I then give you as the author, the, you know, the mastered audio to listen through and make sure everything sounds good. And if you have any notes for me, we call those QC notes where you say, Oh, you know, I, I, we need to change out this word or something was, you know, not pronounced uh, correctly, something along those lines Uh, that goes back to our narrator, whether that's you or somebody else. And we fix it up and then that's it. And we get it up on Audible or wherever it is, find a way or, you know, audiobooks unleashed. And you have a beautiful audiobook companion to your book, which will live forever. And people can, download it and listen to it on their runs or on their commutes or, you know, anytime. So that's, that's that. (laughs) Well said. I love all that information. I didn't know that you actually did the casting part. So that could really help some of the pharmacists who are authors who are listening to this either now or in the future. (laughs) Yes. This podcast should be up for years. So hopefully this advice will will uh, live on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Julie, one of the things that you were just talking about that I want to make sure that we cover is that if a pharmacist wants to read their own audiobook and goes to a studio and has that great engineer who's used to doing audiobooks and can meet the specs and all that great stuff, are you saying that if the audio makes it your way, 
you will accept it with mistakes. I'm an audiobook narrator. Therefore, I am expected to clear up as many mistakes as I can possibly find before it comes to you. But you're saying you would take just uh, the whole audio file and you would edit out the mistakes. Is that right? So that's a really good question. Um, There's two different types of raw audio that uh, engineers can work with for an audiobook. One is called punch and roll. Um, and the others, I call it a straight record. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so a punch and roll is like what, what you do is if you are recording and you catch a mistake, you know, you have some sort of way to maybe you snap really loud or you click or you, you make some sort of noise. So that's very visible in the audio that you have to go back and re-record that. And then on your own, you go back, you re-record it. And, you know, everything is about as good as you can get it before you send it to me. Now, we're all humans here. We are not perfect. And so part of my edit, I don't just listen to the audio and fix it. I'm also proof listening. And so a lot of times, you know, I'm catching dozens, not not you, Kim, because you are great. Um, And you know what? I shouldn't (laughs) even say I shouldn't say that because wonderful narrator some some we just we have pickups there that's what it is um it happens, it happens. but we try really hard oh, not absolutely to. <laughs> you know like that is you know nobody tries to misread anything right like the whole goal is is to right. not and so it has nothing to do with how good or not good a narrator is it's just you know it is part of the job that that i'm catching mistakes so yes um there's that the other option is a straight record a straight record is your whole session. And if you're working at a studio, um, you know, the engineer might be, whoops, the engineer might be able to like, uh, you know, again, make some sort of noise in the audio track so that me as an editor can fix it up. I have only worked on a, a handful of straight records and I have to say they are, they're actually quite brutal. Um, especially if you are an amateur narrator, like you're, you're narrating your own stuff. Um, it is very difficult to to do a, a clean read. And for example, like I said, um, you know, for a straight record, your audiobook once edited might be 10 hours, but if you're going to give me, you know, I might be getting 20 hours, almost 20 hours of raw audio. So will I accept it? Sure. But it will take twice as long to edit. And generally the rate is about twice as much because it's a, it is quite a lot of extra work. So um, those are those are the two general options for recording and sending to an engineer. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for explaining that because I know that there are pharmacists out there who have never been through the process. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to assume that everybody understands what punch and roll right. means. <laughs> and when you said punch and roll earlier, I was thinking, I wonder if pharmacists know what that means. Because what that means is in the studio, they would somehow say stop. Mm-hmm. We're going to pick up at the beginning of this paragraph. I'm going to have you read it again. And then they would either splice it together or or just punch in and roll right over the mistakes so you'd never know it happened. Exactly. Like re-record the paragraph like it never happened. And then when it comes to you, you'll never know that it happened, right? Exactly. Exactly. Thank yep. you for that's ideal. clarifying that. Um, yes, that's definitely uh, a it's a good thing to know. Um, and when I when I work with new narrators, again, like some of this lingo kind of pops out and I try my best to make to like give you sort of like a vocab overview or like a step by step thing so you don't feel lost. Uh, but I think a key when you are looking for an for an engineer when you write your book is just to make sure that you feel comfortable asking questions, because especially your first couple times recording, you don't know. And it's not it's not, it doesn't feel good to not know. Like, you know, you, you, it doesn't feel good to be lost. And so find someone that you feel good asking questions to. Yeah. You have a teacher's heart. I know you do. And so that comes through with the way that you talk to me anyways. And hopefully my listeners can understand that you have a teacher's heart and you're very gentle and yeah, you take the time to educate because you, you want re- repeat business, right, Julie? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And also you, you want to pass specs. You want the book to sell all mm-hmm. the things, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
You mentioned that it can get expensive if you do a straight record, but we haven't talked about money at all. Mm -hmm. So do you mind explaining how much does it cost to work with somebody who proofs, edits, and masters audio? So that's a good question. And there is, of course, like with any any field, there's going to be a bit of a range. Um, on the low end, you will find someone around 75 or 80 uh, $80 per finished hour. So the way that audiobooks in general, you know, when you, when you're figuring out your total cost, um, we look at the word count. So, you know, let, again, just for math's sake, let's say we got an audiobook. It's going to have uh, 80,000 words. We're looking at around eight or nine or 10 hours. Um, and so we do not calculate the cost until we have the finished audio. And then we obviously will just multiply that by our per finished hour rate. And so that's that's just the engineering cost. Um, I've seen engineers up to 150 per finished hour for, um, you know, for the indie engineers. And then, I mean, it could, go, you know, depending on who you get, it can go up from there. But I think in general, you a good quality engineer is going to be around 90, 100 per finished hour. Um, and you can get some some quality work that way. Um, but then if you're going to hire out talent, then that's another, that's another cost to consider. Uh, and it very well, you know, might be worth it for you. In fact, it should be worth it for you because everybody, you, you don't want to listen to an audiobook that doesn't flow nicely. And the t this is literally their jobs to make something sound good. Um, and so most talent uh, is going to be somewhere around and 250 on the on, is usually the lowest you're gonna find somebody 250 per finished hour, um, and then depending on who you find, could be up to 354 per finished hour. So you have to factor all that in. Uh, usually, when working with new authors, I put together a complete per finished hour cost. So I say, okay, my my hourly rate is 100 per finished hour. We're gonna find talent for 280, so you can expect 380 per finished hour, and you have. 60,000 words. So this is approximately what you can expect, but we're not going to know until we're totally done. Pharmacists love math. <laughs> and we do. We love, we love numbers. We love making sense of things with conversion factors. I'm sure there's a lot of pharmacists listening to this right now thinking, oh yeah, I'm nodding my head. Yeah, I love numbers. <laughs> But it makes sense, you know, that you have a cost. The talent that reads the book has a cost. It costs money for the engineer mm -hmm. in the booth to be recording mm -hmm. it. But these these costs are actually very valuable because you don't want to have to create a whole entire studio in your home, my dear pharmacist mm -hmm. author, and buy the equipment and learn how to record, edit, and produce audio and all the things it is a lot of work. Like Julie and I were talking about earlier, there's a lot more to it than anybody realizes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bring up a good point. I mean, if, if you know, we got a lot of DIYers out there and I love DIYers. I love people who want to learn. I mean, I love it. Um, <clears throat> but just to get the basic equipment, you have to say, okay, well, if I'm going to invest, you know, hundreds of dollars into a microphone and editing software and the time to learn it, and then the time to read it, <laughs> and edit it, like it, it adds up, right? So you have to sort of weigh, just weigh the, the cost and see what works for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But it sounds like you could potentially be a one-stop shop for a pharmacist author who wants to hire talent. Yes, absolutely. That's, um, that is what I have been doing for the last couple of years. I've been producing books from a bunch of different genres, and I have an amazing roster of just incredible talent. And so, uh, and it, it's growing. Um, looking forward to going to an audiobook conference in a couple of weeks, and as a producer, and getting uh, more more talent on my list. I'm so very excited. And uh, so, yeah, if you are an author and you don't even know where to begin to create the audiobook, it is one of my favorite things is to show people how to do this. And so I am more than happy to talk with anybody, even if you don't decide to go with me, you just want to have somebody to like lay out the, you know, lay out the, pro uh, the process. I'm happy to talk with anyone. Absolutely. So yeah, that's my job. I can't help saying this. 
You the man. No. <laughs> you the man. <laughs> we the Thank man. Yeah. We the man. We the man. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. This is very valuable information for pharmacist authors. I love that you're a one-stop shop, and I love having this relationship with you so that I can refer people to you. And you're so experienced, too. I don't think we've even talked about the number of books that you've produced. I mean, can you give me a number at this point? Oh my gosh. Uh, it's been a few. I mean, produced, we are looking dozens, dozens and dozens, probably around a hundred, because I've started a couple years ago um, and I've done several series of multiple, like five, six, seven books. So, you know, we're going up to, you know, probably around a hundred, but I mean, I've been doing this for years now and hundreds of books, you know, as far as editing and mastering, that's, that's a whole nother, like two years, you could add that on. And then producing, producing is, is relatively new, uh, within the, like the last year and a half or two. Uh, but I have incredible authors that I work with, love them so much. Um, uh, and so, and they, you know, they are very prolific and it just, it's great. So I really like that. I'm going into the, the producing world. It's, it's fun. Awesome. Well, I, I wish you the best with the production side. Yeah. I know with the engineering side, I think you were over 200 books <laughs> by the time we worked together. I'm trying to think if it was three years ago already for the first book, right? right? Yeah. So you're into the hundreds. hundreds. So yeah. this ain't your first rodeo. <laughs> no, this is not. Absolutely not. But every book is special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah. Well, I love that you love what you do, and it has been a pleasure working with you, Thank and you. I'm so glad that you could come on my podcast to share a little bit about what you do and to validate that I have, in fact, narrated some audio It's books. true. <laughs> it's true. I'm so, so proud of you. I mean, you- Thank you. You're great you to work, work with. Oh, thank you. We're, we're a good team, I just got to say. I know we're- we're Indeed. having a little love fest right now, but it's real. Like for everyone's listening, like this is I'm, this is for real. It's great. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, as we wrap this up, is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, I guess, you know, if you're a pharmacist and you want to write a book and or you have a book and you, you know, you're just not sure whether or not an audiobook is feasible or where to even begin. Uh, first of all, it is. You could totally do it. Um, and Again, I'm always just happy to answer questions. I love talking about this. And so, um, you know, you got this. And yeah, please, please get in touch if you need anything. <laughs> awesome. And your website is? Um, yes. So my business is Whole Story Studio. And the website is just www.wholestorystudio.com. So thank you for asking me that. <laughs> You are very welcome. I got to make sure that they can find you. I will put that website in the show notes so that you can find it. And thank you again, Julie, for being with me here on the Pharmacist Voice podcast. You take care. Thank you. You too. Thanks so much. Thanks again to Julie Walther's audio engineer extraordinaire for being my guest on the Pharmacist Voice podcast, episode 222. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. In the show notes, you'll find a link to Whole Story Studio, Julie's social media links, links to the two audiobooks that Julie and I work together on, my social media links, and more. Please feel free to reach out to Julie and me. Let's connect. If you know a pharmacist author who needs to publish an audiobook, please share this episode with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Join me this Friday, June 16th, for my interview with Dr. Erin L. Albert. We'll be talking about her book, The Life Science Lawyer. If you're in healthcare and you're thinking of going on to law school, you need to listen to my conversation with Erin. Thanks for listening today. I'll talk to you on Friday. Julie, sensitive question. This is a bonus here for anybody still listening. <laughs> uh -oh. Now, if there is a pharmacist author out there and they think they want to narrate their own audiobook, but they're not sure, would you let them try to narrate a chapter or a few pages? And would you be willing to tell them if that's the right situation for them to narrate it themselves, or if they might be better off having a talent that they hire. 
That is a great question. And I think the what you said about perhaps providing me a sample of their read. So I get an idea of what their recording environment would be and of course how they're gonna how how they're gonna sound. I can give, you know, realistic feedback as to whether or not I think that they should go forward with it or if it would be more, you know, it would just be better to hire out talents. Uh, I get audio samples all the time from new narrators to ask about their setup and whether or not it sounds good and whether or not they, you know, are having issues. And it's just a quick and easy, like I can listen to it and give you some really good feedback either way. And, uh, and yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good idea. Um, and would highly suggest doing a test read before trying to do the entire book. Mm hmm. Oh, I love that. I love the service that you're providing there, you know, giving somebody the nod about their recording environment. Mm -hmm. But also, I think that would be such a good idea what you said about, you know, doing a test read before you do the entire thing. If it's a 10 hour audio book mm -hmm. and you're going to spend 20 hours in the booth, why not spend half an hour just <laughs> reading five pages and seeing how many mistakes you mm -hmm. make or what it's like to have to do punch and roll and all that. So this is a great bonus, yes. Julie. Thanks for sticking Thank around. You. I appreciate it. Thanks for this. asking. That's a great question. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye again. <laughs>